Here's more wrestling news for November 4th, 2021. And your headlines for this afternoon include WWE canceled plans for Vince McMahon to shave his head during feud with Hulk Hogan, AEW using Selena Vega to link Andrade with Malachi Black, Natalia explains why WWE didn't hire her for over five years, Becky Lynch dragged for her new Elton John look, Zoe Stark out of action with legitimate injury, ROH parent company Sinclair Broadcasting has over $12 billion worth of debt, Nikki and Brie Bella give update on their pro wrestling future, AEW World Title Eliminator Tournament Finals set for full gear, and more. We are starting today with two titans of the industry, Hulk Hogan and Vince McMahon, who had an on-screen feud in 2003 that fans had waited for years to see. The feud saw Hogan beat the chairman at WrestleMania 19, but the irate chairman didn't stop there. After being storyline fired by McMahon, Hogan returned as Mr. America, a patriotic masked superstar, but left the company for real months later over a dispute about pay. Speaking on his Something to Wrestle With podcast, Bruce Prichard discussed the angle this week and said that a rematch was planned with much higher stakes. This rematch would have been a mask versus hair match and would have ended with Mr. America getting the win before shaving the chairman bald. Although Hulk Hogan would eventually lose his iconic do, that was in 2007 at WrestleMania 23, but had Hogan not left over money, McMahon's head would have been shaved years prior to the Battle of the Billionaires. AEW now as the company has never been afraid to work with other promotions like Impact and New Japan, but WWE remains off limits to Tony Khan. Two ex-WWE names now in AEW are Andrade El Idolo and Malachi Black, both of whom have a connection to WWE's Queen Zelina Vega. On Wrestling Observer Live, Tony Khan discussed Zelina Vega and how the connection she has to both wrestlers has been used to advance AEW storylines without ever saying the Raw superstar's name. It got personal when Cody stuck his nose in when Andrade's old friend from Florida, of course they're both close with the same lady, Malachi Black's wife has managed Andrade, that's no secret, and you know they're good friends. Malachi Black came to do Andrade a solid, and Cody was there to stop Malachi, and it was the third match in their trilogy, and there's a lot of meat on the bone there, too. There's unresolved issues, and it's a pretty exciting situation right now. AEW isn't the only company to have this subtle approach of acknowledging other companies, as on Raw this week, Kevin Owens teased leaving when his contract expires in three months' time. WWE Champion Big E also gave a reference to Mount Rushmore, the pre-WWE stable Owens was in prior to coming to WWE. Though there was a time when some believed that Vega would come to AEW, she resigned with WWE earlier this year, ironically to be close to her husband before he was cut, but that hasn't stopped AEW from making use of her without saying her name. As a 13-year veteran of WWE's main roster, Natalya is one of the longest tenured active superstars and the longest tenured in the women's division. Not only a former champion, Natalya is a constant ambassador for the company, doing public appearances and press tours as an advocate for WWE. Speaking to WWE Deutschland this week, however, Natalya said how her relationship with WWE wasn't always so pleasant and that there was a time when the company was reluctant to sign the talented technician. She said, when I was trying to get hired by WWE, my family was estranged from WWE, meaning when you go back to the Montreal Screwjob, even though that happened in 1997, there was a lot of tension between WWE and the Hart family. It was challenging for the Hart family members, especially the younger ones, to get hired. It would take over five years of sending in tapes, promo pictures, and proving herself in other companies before WWE gave Natalya a chance at a tryout. But with the Queen of Hearts having over 1,000 matches as a superstar, all her hard work eventually paid off. Since returning to WWE TV at SummerSlam, Becky Lynch has done everything she can to get heat, including a flashy wardrobe complete with new glasses. The man's new look is certainly different than the superstar from before she took over a year out, and on the latest Legion of Raw, Vince Russo made it clear he wasn't a fan, saying, Bro, look at Becky when she was cutting the bloody promo when Nia Jax busted her open. Look at that Becky, and look at Elton John Becky tonight. How did we go from A to Z, bro? Now she's wearing Elton John glasses and all these bright clothes and she's half comedian, half wrestler. No, bro, you're the tough chick from Ireland who got her face busted. How did you become Elton John? It's all forced, bro. Lynch has worked hard to get fans to dislike her, and it appears to have worked for Russo, as the man's new getup has stirred the pot yet again. 
On the latest episode of NXT 2.0, Zoe Stark was involved in an angle backstage which saw the new women's tag team champions Gigi Dolan and JC Jane attack the 27-year-old superstar. This led to Stark's tag team partner Io Shirai confronting Mandy Rose, along with Casey Catanzaro and Caden Carter, but Stark's injury isn't just for TV. Post Wrestling has noted that Stark is legitimately injured and that it's well known within WWE that she's hurt. The nature of Stark's injury isn't public knowledge at this time, meaning we can't report when exactly fans can expect her back in the ring. Stark and Shirai lost the NXT Women's Tag Team titles at Halloween Havoc's Scareway to Hell ladder match and were wishing the young superstar the best upon her road to recovery. Now, Ring of Honor shocked the wrestling community when they announced a hiatus from production as the company hopes to return by next April. Releasing countless members of the roster, the company's future is certainly in doubt, and the situation with their parent company has only made things look all the more bleak. This week, Sinclair Broadcasting announced its 2021 third quarter earnings, in which they announced their $12.5 million in debt. Most of that is due to their streaming service, Diamond Sports Group LLC, which they've been working on launching. The company has also been reeling from a ransomware attack that disrupted its local programming across the US, and this attack has been linked to a Russian crime group. With Sinclair in serious financial straits, this doesn't bode well for ROH, who have promised to return next year, but may have to look for a new broadcaster first. Back to WWE as the Bella Twins haven't competed in the ring in quite some time and have kept themselves busy with other projects outside of wrestling. At the start of 2021, their reality show Total Bellas saw its final season end, but the Hall of Fame sisters won't be filling their time by getting back in the ring. Speaking on their podcast, which returned this week after a six-month hiatus, the twins discussed their future plans, as Nikki announced, There are no plans for Bree and I to return to the ring. I don't know if I'll ever be able to return to the ring as I am officially retired per our doctors. Bree took a softer approach saying they do miss the ring, but if they ever do go back, it won't be anytime soon. It was in June this year that Nikki confirmed rumors that she was preparing for an in-ring return and that she and Brie had plans to win the WWE Women's Tag Team titles, but those plans are now on the back burner, seemingly for good. And we're ending today with AEW and with Jon Moxley taking the incredibly brave decision to enter rehab for alcoholism, this week's Dynamite was changed dramatically. With Moxley unable to compete in the AEW World Title Eliminator semifinals, it was Miro who replaced him facing off against Orange Cassidy. A match that fans originally expected Moxley to win, it seems the result wasn't changed as, after a kick to the face and locking him in a submission, Miro got the win, advancing to the finals of full gear. Post-match, Brian Danielson, the other finalist, approached the Bulgarian for a handshake, but Miro backed away from his challenger for next week. The winner of their match at Full Gear will earn a guaranteed AEW World Championship opportunity as either Miro or Brian Danielson will face either reigning champion Kenny Omega or Hangman Adam Page after next week's pay-per-view. Well guys, that's our news for today. Please share your comments below. Also hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon to receive all notifications. And as always, thanks for watching.